is funded by the European Investment Bank within the framework of the European Investment Plan, which is better known in Bulgaria as the Juncker Plan. It is in addition to the mobilization of 256 uh, billion uh, euros in different European projects uh, that have resulted in the creation of over 100 <coughs> President of the European Commission, and the, the signing of a big project of 100 million euro within the investment plan for Europe, most popular in Bulgaria as the Juncker plan, which is about to create new 210 jobs and support the agricultural sector in Bulgaria. The project is financed by, through the European Investment Bank as part of the Juncker plan, which already has mobilized more than 256.1 billion euro across Europe and helped creation of more than 300,000 jobs. This project, actually with this project, with the, with the realization of this project, Bulgaria ranks now number three in the Juncker plan in, the ter in terms of investment per euro of the GDP. I would like to turn it over now to Mr. Porozhanov, the Minister of uh, Agriculture, to sign. Vice President Jurki Katainen, Vice President, to sign, please. And Vice President of the European Investment Bank, Mr. McDowell, Mr. McDowell, Vice President of the European Investment Bank. Господин Кирил Домовчев, главен изпълнителен директор на българската компания, която ще изпълнява този проект. Благодаря за вниманието. Сега ще преминем към същата. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the joint press conference held by, Dr. by Mr. Boyko Borisov, the Prime Minister of Bulgaria, and Jean-Claude Juncker, the President of the EC. It follows the fruitful discussions held by Bulgarian ministers and members of the European Commission at the start of the Bulgarian Presidency of the Council of the EU. What are the conclusions and the messages of these meetings? Uh, I would like to give the floor now to Prime Minister Boyko Borisov. Dear Jean-Claude Juncker, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, about the contracts that were signed just now, we would like to thank Jean-Claude Juncker for his fund because we have over 350 million euros under this project in Bulgaria and also the European Investment Bank because interest rates, sorry, not the interest rates, uh, are brought down to a minimum and the security for such loans goes from 120% to 60 or 70%. It's a very well-functioning fund. We hope that uh, it will be continued in future. When it comes to the EU presidency and our joint meetings with the European Commission and the government, they fell into three broad groups. Ministers and commissioners worked together, and I think that uh, in many areas we have made headway and we have clear vision for the upcoming six months but I would like to turn it over to Jean-Claude Juncker now first, and then I can take your questions. Thank you, Prime Minister. Mr. Juncker, you have the floor. Yeah. 
Good afternoon. In uh, Sofia, this is not my first visit to this marvelous city and this uh, uh, country because I was there during the time I was a Prime Minister of uh, Luxembourg and I was here campaigning for the European elections together with my good friend uh, Boyko. And I would uh, start by thanking him for the extraordinary quality of his welcome uh, to um, uh, uh, Bulgaria and for the hospitality over the last uh, uh, two days. It's in fact visit number 50 of uh, Vice Presidents and of Commissioners since the start of our mandate. Those, like some of you, who are writing that we are <coughs> imprisoned at the Berlimont, don't know that we are traveling all the time. Sometimes I have the impression that more commissioners are in member states than, than in, in Brussels. But some of you will continue to write that uh, we are not speaking to people, that we don't take into consideration the feelings of national parliaments and of national social partners. But it's visit number 50 in uh, Bulgaria, which clearly shows that we were preparing very carefully this uh, special this special moment because it's the first ever presidency of uh, Bulgaria in uh, Europe. I was um, watching, following the uh, preparation not only of the presidency but also of the accession process of uh, Bulgaria to the U European uh, Union since uh, so many years and I'm always proud that I was the one who in the name of the European Union signed in Luxembourg <clears throat> in 2005, the accession treaty of uh, uh, Bulgaria. I like uh, this country, not only the Prime Minister, but uh, others uh, uh, too, and some uh, specific culinary speci specialities. Is that English? The speciality, uh, Bulgar, Sopska, Rukanka, I like the two of them, and I will have them hopefully during uh, 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 lunch. J'étais très heureux de... I was also very happy to note that the Juncker plan is working, including in Bulgaria, because we've just signed a contract deal that's a significant contract, and I'm very happy that this has happened. The Bulgarian presidency is taking place at a crucial point in the fate of the European Union. We are generally in very broad agreement on the priorities of the Bulgarian presidency and, of course, the Austrian, the Austrian presidency, which will come after it. We have, of course, also discussed the uh, financial framework. The Commission will be making proposals in this regard in the month of May. And it is our concern that the work gets started as rapidly as possible. We don't want to have a repeat of the last procedure where Council took too long to reach an agreement, which meant that those programs which were due to be financed were not able to be carried out within a reasonable time framework. For us as a Commission, it is of crucial importance that we improve connectedness in the Western Balkans and between there and Turkey. If we want to ensure that the Western Balkan states are better connected among themselves, there's no question I think of reducing the European budget for this purpose. And Commission Oettinger has explained that we want we are looking to a budget of 1.1 percent plus X of the European GNI. Now, if the UK leaves, the 1 percent budget will automatically become 1.1 percent. If we want to achieve all of the ambitions which the Commission, Parliament and Member States have set out for themselves over a period of many years, clearly we have to, within reasonable, a reasonable amount, increase the financial and budgetary capacity of the EU. Now, 
We're very happy to note that the Bulgarian presidency has taken the issue of Western Balkans and is granting it the attention which it deserves. On the 17th of May, here in Sofia, we will be having a West Balkans summit. I will also be taking a look at the expectations of the various players in the Western Balkans on the spot myself, because when this commission took up office, I did say that it will not be possible within the period of office of this commission, in other words, by the 1st of January 2020, to take on additional members into the European Union. The preparations were not sufficient, sufficiently advanced to allow us to do that. However, in the coming commission and parliament term of office, we will certainly have to take a close and more targeted look at this. It's certainly extremely important to ensure that the Western Balkans do obtain and have confirmed once again a clear European perspective. Otherwise, the danger exists in this very complicated region of Europe that we may be looking at uh, possible events which could indeed hark back to the early 90s of the previous century. We certainly do not want to see a repeat of anything like that. Now, we also talked about the Eurozone. Boyko and I, together with the President of the Republic, in my address on the State of the Union in September of last year, I made it clear that all member states, apart from those which enjoy an exception, are entitled to become members of the Eurozone. Now, in, in fact, according to the contract, all of the, it's a matter for the treaty, rather, that those who meet the criteria should uh, join the Eurozone. Now, I didn't say that Bulgaria will be automatically the, the, the next member of the Eurozone, but it's, it's, it's in, heading in the right direction because the uh, budget deficit is below 3%. Or unemployment is falling as well, and budgetary situation is strong. So when it comes to genuine convergence, Bulgaria has achieved significant progress. It's not quite enough yet, and our Bulgarian friends are aware of this. But when it comes to real convergence, there have been genuine progress. And I'm sure that Bulgaria will, or should, join ERM2 as rapidly as possible. Uh, put into place, it, and we will put into place a pre-accession help for those countries willing and being able to join the Euro area. Um, we, were we, 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 discuss, we did discuss the um, gas supplies in uh, the region. I know that this is of the highest political interest of uh, Bulgaria, and I wanted to say that as a Commission, we are supporting these uh, ambitions uh, formulated by the Bulgarian government because we do think that uh, uh, gas supplies, connecting gas supplies, not divisive and dividing uh, gas supplies are of the utmost uh, importance. And when it comes to this point, we are on the very same avenue than the Bulgarian government is. The Commission, as we are always anticipating what is happening when we are meeting the government, was taking a picture. You can see it, but you don't understand it, nor do I. But describing the gas hub of Bulgaria. That's for you, Prime Minister. Thank you. Thank you, President. Now we have the floor for questions. If you'll allow me before that, a few words. Thank you, Jean-Claude, for your support, for everything that the European Commission has done for Bulgaria. I would like to seize the opportunity of apologizing to the citizens and uh, visitors in Sofia because of the high security measures. Uh, Thank God it will only last for two days. 
there won't be so many high-level meetings. Uh, the next one in line will be on the 16th and the 17th of May. There is no other building which can host uh, such uh, events uh, held by the presidency. So once again, sorry about this. About cohesion, if there is something that Bulgaria holds very dearly, that Bulgaria will stick to it, its guns, this is cohesion funds, because internally this is our commitment. And we are convinced that for the Balkans, the new members and uh, the ones who joined just before us, this is something of paramount importance. Then Western Balkans, of course, it's a quite straightforward topic, and Jean-Claude can say more about this after his visit, but I'm deeply convinced that if we give them a perspective, and the most secure perspective for the EU is building infrastructure in the Balkans, railways, uh, highways, ports, waste treatment plants, European corridors, numbers four, eight, ten, that will ensure connectivity. I think that this is free of any risk for the EU and it will allow for greater competitiveness, more investment, more tourism, greater cohesion between cultures and uh, citizens. Of course, Turkey and Russia are important neighbors of the EU, so we need to be very careful about those issues. I think that we should try to normalize our relations, but of course, this is something to be discussed by the Council, by all our colleagues, and we will always show solidarity with the decisions made there. We truly hope Commissioner Oettinger said as well that there have been some positive developments in Germany about setting up the new government. We hope that quite soon uh, we will have good news from Berlin and we'll be, and our colleagues from Germany will be ready to start working because there are quite important decisions ahead of us. I would like to thank Commissioner Shevchovic and Jean-Claude Juncker because this picture, this scheme about what we call the European uh, gas hub is something that uh, will integrate Bulgaria. Bulgaria will not be isolated and justice will be administered and Bulgaria will become a center not just for gas distribution but also for supplies of different types of gas. You can see that in addition to Russian gas, there is uh, Azeri gas, local gas, uh, Romanian gas. And when we talk about gas hub, it's not only about transit, but about true diversification and compliance with the third energy package. This is an opportunity for Bulgaria to come back to its rightful place. We used to be the most loyal member of the EU. We complied with the sanctions regime uh, and wanted to be nice to our um, friends in uh, Ukraine. And then South um, Stream became Turkish Stream and Poseidon went through Turkey, NATO Turkey, NATO Greece and NATO Italy. Thank you to the Commission for having protected the Bulgarian interest as well, because being loyal doesn't mean that you have to be punished. Thank you, Jean-Claude Juncker. Even since day one, I think that he took my message. And now this Balkan gas hub is something that is highly appreciated, and we are quite thankful for it. Shall we proceed with the Q&A session? Please introduce yourselves, the name and the media. One question from local media, Bulgarian media, and one uh, question from foreign media. Gabriela Ndoptanova from BTV. I have a question for the president of the EC and for the prime minister Borisov. Mr. Juncker. When Bulgaria presented its uh, priorities in Brussels, uh, you said that you don't see any strategic risk for the Bulgarian presidency. How would you comment now 
Turkey's willingness to become a priority agenda item once again for Europe. Well, nothing. I um, don't have any additional remarks. In fact, in addition to what I've already said, relations with Turkey remain supremely important for the EU as a whole. And in saying this, I am reiterating what I've already said. Turkey is moving away from its European ambitions of the past, and we are going to have to see now what kind of progress Turkey makes in the coming months. But there will not be any progress while there are journalists in Turkish jails. <coughs> any other questions? If you'll allow me, I would like to take this one as well. Turkey is an important neighbor. Compliance with the migration agreement is very important for Europe. After all, let's not forget that uh, since signing this agreement with Turkey, the migration flow has uh, decreased many times. And you remember what sort of crisis situation we had back then. And the aftermath is still affecting some large member states in Europe. We insist on uh, the rule of law, media freedom, and I truly hope that the Turkish government uh, will rethink its treatment of journalists because this would uh, make our future work easier when we'll have to find the right level. It can't be the meeting with the Western Balkans here, but we will try to find a forum where we can improve our relations with the largest neighbor of the EU in this part of Europe. So I hope that with some corrections made by Turkey and our political will, this region will take a turn for the better and the EU will take a turn for the better as well. Any other questions? Uh, Daniel Brössler, Süddeutsche Zeitung. Prime Minister, you already mentioned the news from Berlin. How important is the forming of a new government in Germany for the success of your presidency? What do you expect from a new German government? Would you expect a new German government, for example, um, to uh, give up its opposition against uh, uh, Bulgaria becoming uh, a member of uh, the Schengen Zone? And, uh, Herr Kommissionspräsident, question to you, Commission President. Are you relieved? To what extent are you relieved? What do you expect of the new federal government once, once it's been formed, of course? Ich habe ihn aber now, this morning, in the European policy, I read the, the, the European policy part of the agreement following the exploratory discussions. And in terms of the substance, I am um, very happy with what the CDU, CSU, and the SPD have agreed as part of a common policy for the future. It's a significant, positive, constructive, future-looking contribution to the European policy debate in Europe. So I'm quite satisfied, but happy with the overall policy, and not at the moment. Any other questions? The Bulgarian National Radio, just a second, please. True, Germany is one of the drivers of the European Union and German stability impacts on all of the EU. Having in mind that Germany is the largest contributor and you see in each panel meetings today we discussed common European defense, the migratory fund, cohesion funds, agricultural policy. And at the end, Mr. Oettinger said that the formula of 1.1 is not enough for the EU budget. It has to be plus X. Of course, the largest amount of money is expected from Germany once again. So we all hope that this uh, process will come to an end soon because it will be for the benefit of all. Even the Berlin process for the Western Balkan, the name itself contains Berlin. 
and all those topics that we raise depend also on cooperation by Chancellor Merkel, Merkel on her support in solving the issues. So we are waiting for this quite impatiently. And you are not right about Schengen, by the way. I know very well the German position on Schengen. On the 6th of February, there will be a two-day visit by the Dutch uh, uh, Prime Minister Rutte. I will take him to the border to see how the border is protected. And if there is any other Schengen border better protected than us, I would say, OK, don't uh, accept us in Schengen. But he promised me, and he confirmed yesterday that on the 6th and 7th of February he will be here. And I hope that there won't be a lot of snowfall. I will take him to the border, because Bulgaria is the best protector of the European border right now. David Cameron. Uh, Viktor Orban and defense ministers uh, and interior ministers from many EU countries came here. So this topic of Schengen, I hope, is something that will uh, be solved quite soon, because we really don't deserve this. The same thing is about the Eurozone. Jean-Claude uh, Juncker was involved in developing the Maastricht criteria. Very bright financiers worked on them. They clearly say that if the percentage of uh, foreign debt is more than 60 percent, if budget deficit is more than 3 percent, there is nothing good in store for this country. This is why Bulgaria made a commitment, and all my governments so far have complied strictly to this criteria, and we've been among the top three in Europe. Thank you. The Bulgarian National Radio. Marta Mladenova, speak up, please. Marta Mladenova, Horizon uh, Program, Bulgarian National Radio. Mr. Juncker, Prime Minister Borisov protected Bulgaria's right to be part of the EU uh, Eurozone and Schengen. How are you going to convince member states that do not like to see Bulgaria join Schengen? Would you consider Bulgaria's membership in EU and uh, Euro area as a priority until the, the end of your term? Since I've been president of the Commission, I've always been calling for Bulgaria to join the Schengen zone. Now, we feel that Bulgaria meets all the general conditions required to join, so it's a bit uh, annoying, of course, that despite the reality on the ground that the government that certain governments refuse to wish to see Bulgaria in the Schengen zone. I said in the theater yesterday evening that Bulgaria's place is in the Schengen zone, and I will not budge an inch when it comes to recalling this fact, and we will raise the issue, raise the issue if necessary, at the summit or elsewhere. Any other questions? We see many hands uh, in the air. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Connolly from the BBC. I wanted to ask both of you gentlemen uh, if you worry that the uh, time frame for accession in the Western Balkans is now so long that some of the accession states might just give up hope. And for Mr Juncker in particular, will the budgetary problems created by Brexit make that very long process even longer? I don't think that the Brexit negotiations will have any kind of influence on the calendar concerning the accession of the Western Balkan states uh, to the European Union. I said very clearly, I think that uh, nobody can uh, enrich the European family before the end of the mandate of this Commission because uh, the uh, accession uh, conditions are not entirely fulfilled. And I'm repeating myself by saying that it will be up to the period, mandate period of the next Commission, two, November 2019, November 2024, to push member states and public opinions in that uh, direction. Victor Ivanov, 24 hours. Victor Ivanov, 24 hours newspaper. Mr. Juncker, you're in favor of Bulgaria joining Schengen and the Eurozone, but at the same time, the perception of the country is that this is the most corrupt 
EU member state. Do you think that this is tied up with accession to Schengen and Eurozone? I mean the problem with corruption. I would uh, fully speak out against this very simplistic idea whereby Bulgaria is corrupt throughout. There is a corruption problem in Bulgaria, just as there is a corruption problem in other member states. But I do note with satisfaction that the Bulgarian government, in combating corruption, as it has been doing, has made rem significant progress over the past few years. And I'm very confident that this problem will be able to be resolved and make it clear that it's incorrect to portray Bulgaria as a totally corrupt country, which is not the case. But there are problems with corruption, and elsewhere too, and that's not mentioned of as often. Any other questions? Can you take questions from this part of the room, please? Um, Prime Minister uh, Susana Fres, SIC Portugal. Uh, for you, Prime Minister Borisov, uh, you said that uh, your country did a lot to enter the Eurozone. So actually, I would like to ask you exactly what is still missing, what do you think your country can do more to enter the Eurozone? And President Juncker, if I may, and uh, today uh, Minister Centeno takes uh, action as uh, president of the Eurogroup, and you, you yourself have been also president uh, of the Eurogroup. What's your advice? Advising. Thank you. I will keep it brief. Whatever we had to do, we did it. It's also, we have a currency board arrangement in Bulgaria. We have a, a large fiscal reserve. So, to actually, two left is equal to one euro. And as Mr. Juncker said, we are ready for ERM2. And I hope that quite soon this will become a reality. I don't know, madam, if you asked me which advice I would give to the Portuguese Prime Minister or to the Bulgarian government when it comes to talking to the President of the Eurogroup. In any case, I very much welcome the new President of the Eurogroup. I think it was wise to nominate a president from a certain part of, of Europe, which is not necessarily to be confused with the Mediterranean group. But in any case, this is the president who has been chosen. And uh, I would prefer not to issue advice to him. It will be the pr third permanent president of the Eurogroup. And he will be coming to talk to the first president of the Eurogroup very soon, in fact. We are ready to take only one more question, colleagues. I'm sorry about this, but we are pressed for time and we have to wrap it up. I would like to thank uh, Prime Minister Boyko Borisov and uh, President Juncker. Thank you, all of you, for your interesting questions. Voilà. Okay, let's go,